And here we are, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. One of my favorite topics, this and actually the, the next couple of sections all go with this same idea. This kind of lays the foundation for eigenvalues, eigenvectors, diagonalization. I'm going to kind of walk you through it with a couple of examples and see if I can explain it. So suppose I take this matrix A. Matrix A is the matrix 3, 0, 8, negative 1. And I've got a vector that is 1, 2. Suppose I take matrix A and multiply it by X. All right, so I take matrix A, which is 3, 0, 8, negative 1, and I multiply it by this other column vector of 1, 2. Look what I get. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 0 is 3. 8 times 1 is, uh, three time, eight times one is 8, minus 2 is 6. All right. This, this column vector here is 3 times vector x. Here's what we ended up with. We got a times the vector x equals 3 times the vector x. This vector x has a name. We call it an eigenvector. And that 3 is oftentimes represented by lambda. And lambda is called the eigenvalue. When we set these up, that's all these eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. They're multiples. So if you can take a matrix times a column vector and get a multiple of that same column vector, then whatever constant is the multiple, that's your eigenvalue, and that vector itself is the eigenvector. So a couple of things worth mentioning here. One of them is that that vector can't be the zero vector. Why? Because what are you ending up with? If you have a times x equals lambda x, right? a times the vector equals lambda times the vector. If you've got the zero vector, then you're saying a times the zero vector equals lambda times the zero vector. Yeah, it's not really special. right? If you multiply anything by the zero vector on both sides, you'll just get the zero vector equals a zero vector. On the other hand, lambda can be zero. So you can have the eigenvalue of zero, but you can't have the eigenvector of zero. Right? Sometimes we also refer to these as the vector being an eigenvector of the matrix that corresponds to lambda. So the eigenvalue of a matrix, or eigenvector of a matrix that corresponds to lambda. Let's try an example here and see if we can determine whether something is an eigenvector. All right, so matrix A will be the matrix negative 3, 10, 5, 2. And the question is, I'm going to give a couple of these. Is x an eigenvector of A? In other words, can you find a multiple that will give you that matrix times the vector equals a multiple of the vector? First one is, let's try x equals 4, 4. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to take a times the vector and see if there exists a lambda that will work. Okay, so matrix A is negative 3, 10, 5, 2 times 4, 4. Does that equal some lambda times 4, 4? So on this side over here, I get negative 12 plus 40. 40 minus 12 is 28. Down the bottom, I get 20 plus 8 is also 28. Yeah, 28, 28 is 7 times 4, 4. So yes, it is true. It's an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 7. All right, let's try another one. Suppose I've got vector x equals negative 4, 8. Again, same question, is it an eigenvector of that matrix? So I'll do negative 3, 10, 5, 2, and I'll multiply it by negative 4, 8. And I get 80 plus 12 is 92, and then negative 20 plus 16 is negative 4. This is not a multiple 
of negative 4, 8. So no, is that vector is not an eigenvector corresponding to that matrix. So every eigenvalue actually has an infinite number of eigenvectors, because you can keep multiplying by different scalars to get different ones. So if you take all of your eigenvectors plus the zero vector, we call it the eigenspace. So combine all of your, take a set of all of your eigenvectors of a matrix along with the zero vector, we call that the eigenspace because it's actually a subspace of Rn. Next question then becomes, how do we find these eigenvalues? This is the process that we go through. All right, so I'm going to give an example or two that runs that teaches the process as we go along. So let's say I've got matrix A as 4, negative 1, 2, 1. And I want to find the eigenvalues. that correspond to that matrix. So the first step is we want to find the determinant of lambda i minus a. Okay, what does lambda i minus a look like? Well, lambda i is the identity matrix, except with lambdas down the diagonal, minus a, which was the matrix that I gave you, 4, negative 1, 2, 1, that gives me lambda minus 4, 1, negative 2, lambda minus 1. Okay, now calculate the determinant of that. The determinant of that matrix is going to be lambda minus 4, lambda minus 1, plus 2. Right, so minus a negative 2 will give me a plus 2. I can expand that out a little bit, make it lambda squared. Minus lambda minus 4 lambda gives me minus 5 lambda. Plus 4 plus 2 is 6. All right, second step, set the determinant lambda i minus a equal to 0. We have a name for this. We call it the characteristic polynomial. So we got lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 equals 0. All right, next step, solve for lambda. This one is factorable, so I'll factor it. Lambda minus 2, lambda minus 3. Double check your factoring because it's easy to factor incorrectly. And if you do, when we get to the part where the process gets a lot longer, the whole thing is going to go from there. So lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6, I'm convinced. So I get lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3. Those are the two eigenvalues that correspond to matrix A. All right, let's try another one. Let's try this matrix over here. I've got matrix A equals negative 2, negative 7, 1, 2. And I want to see if there's any eigenvalues that correspond to matrix A. So what do I have to do? I have to first find the matrix lambda I minus A. So I get lambda 0, 0, lambda minus negative 2, negative 7, 1, 2. This will give me a lambda plus 2, 7, negative 1, lambda minus 2. All right, now find the determinant. I get lambda plus 2, lambda minus 2, minus a negative 7, equals 0. 
multiply it out, this just becomes a difference of squares, lambda squared minus 4 plus 7 is going to give me plus 3. And now I can do lambda squared equals negative 3. Huh. No real eigenvalues. Right, so we're not going to worry at this point about non-real eigenvalues. We're only working on eigenvalues, real eigenvalues. Okay. Let's try another example. And this time I think we'll go ahead and find the eigenvectors that correspond to the eigenvalues. All right, so now let's find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors that correspond to this matrix. Matrix A is 10, negative 9, 4, negative 2. All right, so the first step is find the matrix lambda i minus a. If you can start um, putting this together and realizing that you're going to end up with a lambda minus 10 and a lambda plus 2 down the diagonal, and then the other two signs are just going to change. So you're going to end up with a positive 9 and a negative 4, right? So lambda i minus a will give you this matrix here. Then I should take the determinant of lambda i minus a, set it equal to zero. That's going to give me the characteristic polynomial. So I get lambda minus 10, lambda plus 2, minus a negative 36 is equal to zero. I foil it out. I end up with a lambda squared minus 8 lambda minus 20 plus 36 is plus 16. And when you factor this, this is a perfect squared trinomial, lambda minus 4 squared. What does that mean? That means I only end up with one eigenvalue. And that eigenvalue is lambda equals 4, and we say it has a multiplicity of 2. Meaning we only got one eigenvalue, but it's an eigenvalue with a multiplicity of 2 because it came from a squared equation. Now, if I want to find the eigenvectors, then what I have to do is solve lambda i minus a times the vector equals 0 for each lambda. Well, this one's going to be a pretty easy process because we only have to do it once because the only lambda we have is lambda equals 4. If you're solving a bigger system and you got three different eigenvalues, you're going to have to do it three different times. So lambda i minus a. Well, if I take four times the identity matrix, I get 4, 0, 0, 4. Minus matrix A, which was 10, negative 9, 4, negative 2. This gives me negative 6, positive 9, negative 4, positive 6. Now I want to set that equal to 0. So what I do is I just drop a column of zeros at the end. So negative 6, 9, 0, negative 4, 6, 0, and I row reduce. Divide the top row by negative 6, and I get 1, negative 3 halves 0. On the bottom, if I divide by negative 4, I get 1, negative 3 halves 0. Huh. So this gives me a row of zeros. 1, negative 3 halves 0, 0, 0, 0. Whenever you have one of these eigenvector problems, you should come up with a row of zeros. Okay, in this case, we do. That means you're going to set up a parameter. So x sub 2 is t, x sub 1 equals negative 3 halves or positive 3 halves times t. So my eigenvector is 3 halves 1 because it can be any multiple of the eigenvector. Now, in a little bit, we're going to see whether or not that's a good idea or whether it will work in all cases. Just because you came up with one eigenvector doesn't mean that the whole system works. All right, I'm going to start another video with 
some 3x3 examples, and then we'll look at linear transforms in this way too.